would be true, but not, okay, say something that's, think something that's true, think it in your head, think of something that's true, that's not true in a different context. Water is scarcity. Do it? Water is scarcity. Scarcity of water. You know, lack of water, that's it. See, okay, okay, yeah. So, here's... Scarcity of water. Scarcity of water, that's a good, oh, good point. Okay, yeah. So, changes. What, what, what are we getting at? Absolute truth. Scarcity of water is not an absolute truth. Is it a truth? Is there some place out there that where water is scarce? Yeah, that's a good one. Right? Yes. We know that. Like, go out to the desert, Nevada, somewhere, Sahara. Go, villages don't have clean water. Like, you can be there, there is scarce water. Right here in this room is water scarce. Is clean water scarce? No. But it's a subject that's brought up a lot. It's, it can be an important subject. Right. Uh, you could even relate that to uh, two opposing arguments. Like someone's arguing, water scarce. We need to we need to put more <coughs> efforts into clean water. And someone's like, well, that's not true. Water isn't scarce. Are are both sides technically right? Yeah. Both sides are saying something true. So what we need to boil absolute truth down to is something that is true no matter what. Who's got an example? Think of an example. Let's, let's think of an example. What is true no matter what? Some, uh, something similar, sem, semi-similar situation. What is true no matter what? Could we say about gravity? Oh, I, I was actually going to bring up the gravity one. Gravity. Is that true no matter what? Like, what's, what would be a good example? Gravity exists. It, it pulls at the same, I forget what the like, kips are on or whatever. But does it? It exists so long as matter exists. So matter Gravity exists. is subjective. I have, I weigh, here you, probably too much information about me. I weigh 220 pounds standing right here. If I go to the moon, do I weigh 220 pounds? No. No. Gravity, gravity does not always exist. <laughs> that standing right here in front of me, or well, like not in front of me, but in front of you, gravity exists. That's true. Does gravity always exist? No. Alright, what you got? There's always an attraction between two masses. That would be a more true statement. Yeah. Because That, that's contingent, you, you could say that's contingent on there being two masses, right? But that's true. Any, any reason why that statement wouldn't be true? It is easier to get a true statement, or sorry, it's easier to get an untrue statement when you're making, trying to make a claim. It is more easy, easy to make an absolute truth when you say something is not. Right, if I say, so the thing of example here, if I say, right now, we are not cold, for example. Let's just say that. Some of you might be cold. So that. Is that has a high, does that have a higher chance of being a true statement than me saying we are all cold? As a really cheesy example, but. You get the point. Now that might not, might not be true, right? Some of you might be cold, some of you might not be too cold. If I come in here and say this table <coughs> is not blue, is that a true statement? Unless you're colorblind, then yeah. Well, in that case, you could argue that you could you have a harder time seeing the truth. I have a colorblind my brother, who has actually learned to adapt to knowing, because, but well, that's a good, good point, because sometimes all of us see things through different lenses, right? Different, what I mean by different lenses, you can be different worldviews. <coughs> but to say that this table is white is a different statement than to say this table is not 
blue. Kind of getting the, the idea behind what an absolute truth is, right? I could say this table is white and I could be true. But is this table white under every circumstance? No. Why? Uh, any, any science, semi-science related people here other than math? What, uh, what makes this table white? Light. Light. Color temperature. Of if I change the frequency of light going to this table, if I change the, the context this table is in, does that remain true? No. no. This table becomes no longer white. So when we talk about things that we think are true, we need to consider the subcontext they are in. And all these, do they still remain true? So, go ahead and pick up your, your cards. I'm gonna have you shuffle them around, hand them to somebody else. You don't have, like, did anyone put their name on it? No, it's not a quiz, you don't have to put your name on it. Pass them around. You can throw them across the room, I don't care. Give them to someone else. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, what? I'm gonna have something. I'm, oh. First, first thing. What was the first question I asked? The right now on the card. Something that you know is true. Who's, who's got me? Who's gonna talk? About, who's gonna bring something up? Look at your card. I have a dog. You what? I have a dog. Okay, that's that's something you know is true. Do you have a dog right now? Well, With you. So is that a truth or is that an absolute truth? That's true. Like it's it's kind of true based on the context, but it's not absolutely true right now. It, it's true. I like old dogs. That's great. Dogs are awesome. But it's not absolute. It is not true that you have a dog with you right now. Context. If your context can change, does the truth change? And don't worry. This seems trivial, but we're going to build up to a little bit larger of a point. Who else? What else? The Bible is God's holy and inspired work. work. Great. I was hoping someone would bring that up. Did any of the Bible people bring that up? Write that down. Who wrote that down? Nice. Oh. History. Bible's history. But that's my opinion. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> but no, that's bad. <laughs> um, is that truth? Or is that an absolute truth? <coughs> absolute truth, because that's the case well, yeah, in uh, context. Yeah. It, it's consistent without context. Like, no matter what context, if I go 20 years from now in another country on the sun, is that still true? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense in another country on the sun. Yeah, just completely different context. Now, you might have a different world view that doesn't let, that you don't agree with that statement. But that boils down to you don't agree that that's a, that's a truth. Which means one, someone looking at that is wrong, right? Correct. All right. What do I have? Something else. What else do I got? The sky is above me. The sky is above you. Well, that's a good one. What's the problem with that statement? Turn upside down. What counts as above you? Opposite to gravity. What if you're in space? What if you're an astronaut? Then is the sky above or below you? It's everywhere. You've got plants in other places. Well, what is the sky? If you define the sky as the Earth's sky, then it is wherever uh, you're turned. Context. Yeah. Context. Yeah. You change the context of that statement. Is it true or not? It could be not true. It could be not true. Therefore, it is not an absolute truth. What else? I'm a Bible major. You're a Bible major. Okay. What do y'all think? Change your major. <laughs> you could change your major. Yeah, you could argue that right now that's, you know, no matter where you went, context. But as soon as you change your major, are you a Bible major? Is that you, a, a, bit, a Bible major? Is that now? Once you graduate, are you still a Bible major? Great point. Are you still a Bible, Bible major <laughs> once you graduate? So what if you, are you? You could. Did you burn a degree and you put it You were a Bible major. Does that make the statement, I am a Bible major, still true? 
uh, start, start thinking about this. Like, the reason behind these statements is so often we will make a statement to someone else, especially related to political or uh, just social views, that we assume is true. What else do I have? Second question. What else do we got? Junk food is healthy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Junk food is healthy. Yeah. Yeah. This is the second question, right? Yeah. Do what? This is the second question. Right? Yep. Second question. I got it. junk food is healthy. That's a thing that you used to think was true. Why? So here, here's Smoking my point. This is why I had to write it down. Why was that said? Why would someone say that? Perhaps to justify eating junk food? Yeah. Or just to justify eating junk food. I think we're going to come back to this one. What's up? What do I got? Another one. Concrete hardens to dry. Or dries to harden. I knew you were going to love that one. Concrete dries to harden. I used to think that was class. true. Okay. Um, that's a, that'd be one of those things, you know, that's said. Someone may fully believe that. Then you might learn, learn later. Uh, maybe my construction guys want to tell us about that. True, yeah. Hydration cures concrete. <laughs> right, here we go. Methods one class, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry for everyone who's not a CMA. <laughs> All right, we don't have that's not related to construction. We got more people in here. Yeah. What else we got? This one, uh, dinosaurs existed and are related to the biblical creation. Oh, mm -hmm. oh dinosaurs existed and are related to biblical creation. Okay, so you wrote that down as you, you thought was true, you told somebody, and that was not true. Okay? What else? I'm still liking my fast food one. I didn't Do what? I didn't. You didn't hurt a sibling. Okay, that was a good one too. And say, here's, say again. I'm sorry. We did. I didn't hurt a sibling. Ah. So says talking to mom. So <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a conversation with parents. <laughs> I didn't hit him. Here's the let's let's look at the unless someone's got another good one. Anyone got a good one? Don't feel shy. We're gonna we're gonna be talking about stuff all night. Uh, I can easily throw an immaculate inning. A what? Immaculate inning, so it's baseball. Ah. You can easily three, throw. Three, okay, three, okay, three, okay. So, so let's let's look at let's look at the fast food. I still like the fast food. The fast food and uh, <laughs> the kids on the I didn't hurt a sibling. We'll come back to. Him. Why? Why would it be if someone would say, I, or fast food is healthy? Why, why would I tell Mr. Faust, fast food is healthy? To promote your business. To promote my business, okay. Uh, people want to have something quick and on the go. Um, no one has well, to have it's, it's a, So it's a, th that's a statement. That is a statement that they're, Fast food is healthy. They're, they're claiming a truth there. Every time you say something is, you're claiming a truth. A truth and a false, a truth and a lie are different like this. If a truth is, a, a statement is true, if it claims something that is, is. A statement is false when it claims something is that is not. Does that make sense? There's a lot of is 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 not there. Truth, a statement is true if it claims something is or is not. Is that is or is not that is not. Statement is false when it claims something is that is not or is not that is. So when I say fast food is healthy, all of us I um, pretty well understand fast food is not healthy. So why would someone say that? 
they were for themselves. I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to go deeper. Why would someone say fast food is healthy? Think of yourself. Who, who, who wrote it down? Why did you, why would you write, why did you say that? Because um, I am, because um, I have a sweet tooth. I, I that's, what, that's what I want right there. I have a sweet tooth. All of us kind of have a sweet tooth, right? A lot of people, <laughs> someone's got to tell me. Uh, a lot of people will say something that is not true in order to justify something that they're doing that is wrong. It could be wrong, could not be wrong, but as soon as you lie about it, it is wrong. Does that make sense? If you have to lie to cover up something, it is wrong. Falsehoods, nothing good can come from saying something that is not true. That's a pretty bold statement. Nothing good can come from saying something that is not true. Who, who, who wants to argue that? Could we say it's moment, momentary happiness or what seems like it's good? And eventually the lies are all apart. Eventually, yes. What is good? It's not good. Not Do what? What is good? I think it's an important way to find good because in the eyes of someone who is committing a sin, that pleasure is good, even though it doesn't last. Okay, we'll put this in context because we all kind of fairly well agreed on the question that God's word is truth, right? That for us that's the Bible is God's word, that's truth. If I want to say something is good, what do I have to first anchor that to? You have to anchor it to what, by God's standards, whether, whether by God's standards it's good or not. And would it be safe to say that God's standards is truth? Saying, so by what I'm getting at is create a, saying a falsehood, saying something is not true, will never come around to fulfilling truth or fulfilling God's will. Right? We're a Christian university. We can pretty well anchor all of our value into God's word. Okay, so if I said fast food was healthy, I said it because I have a sweet tooth and I want to, I want, maybe I'm I told Mr. Faust that I'm on a diet, right? Cool. I'm not, but that's, so that's what I said. And then I go, Mr. Faust told Christopher, David's on a diet. And then Christopher and I go out and grab something to eat. And we're going to fast food. Christopher's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, it's healthy. I'm justifying my false actions by either convincing myself of something that's not true or saying something I know is not true. And as soon as I start to say something, tell someone else I'm something that's not true, I reinforce my mind and it becomes harder and harder and harder to get back on it. Let's go back to the I never heard a sibling. What reason would someone say I never heard, I never heard a sibling? To avoid punishment. To avoid punishment. To avoid consequences. <coughs> so I avoid consequences by <coughs> saying a lie, which would technically accumulate more consequences. We, we think this is trivial, right? We feel like, well, yeah, put it, put it in that context. Like, little kid, it's got chocolate over her face. I, don't, I didn't do it. I didn't eat the cookies, right? Well, that accumulates more consequences. We think that's trivial until we start applying that same things to our lives. If I have a belief that I know is false, either I know it's false, I don't know that it's right, or 
Someone else told me, I don't know if they know it's right, but I believe it. Right? Does that make your consequences? Let's think of Christian, Christian, Christian perspective. Will anything good come from that? It's a simple question. No. No. Something, if I tell somebody something that I either don't know is true, or I know is not necessarily true, but I'm claiming it's true, and they trust me to know what I'm talking about, one, I just passed on that falsehood to somebody else. I've created, basically, my, my sin, my untruth has created someone else also telling the truth, also telling the sin. Does that make sense? What I want to put this into, your, into the prospect of is when we start piling up untruths and lies and untruths and lies, it piles up those consequences. Maybe you're, maybe you've got something going on that gets in the way of all your homework, all your school, all your work. It's causing you to procrastinate. It's causing you to have too much stress. And you know, back in mind, you know what it is. But you keep telling yourself it's not true. Does that have consequences? You're building, you're building up an untruth. Whether you tell it to yourself or someone else, it's not true. What about if, here, I'm going to hit, I'm going to get, uh, not political on you, but I'm going to bring up politics. If I watch something on the news, and that guy on the news told me it's true, does that mean it's true? I'm not picking sides, I'm not bringing up sides on the news here. If I see someone on the news tell me it's true, is it true? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So if someone, <coughs> so the, if I go, I read that, saw, read, watch that on the news. He, he gave me some, uh, something that's true, he told me it's true, but it's actually more of an opinion. Does that mean it's true? But if I take it as true, and then I go tell Andrew here, oh, did you, did you hear that such and such on the news? That's crazy. Our world's burning out, or our world's doing so great. Everything's so great. But it wasn't true. I just, not just did I mess up and build up consequences myself, but we all understand that's, that's sin. I just told the untruth. I just convinced him that it's an untruth. Or I convinced him that it's true and it's an untruth. And, well, again, it's on him to accept it as truth. But it wasn't. So I'm going to get back to it because I'm going to take a further here. What's the third thing on your card? Someone bring up your card. What's the third thing? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this was something that I never thought I could do. Yes. It means that you have done it. That or something absolutely way out there that you never thought you could do. You okay. never think you do. Okay. Extreme example. You could very most people proclaim they could never be a Nazi. Is that a fair assessment? Like most people in here probably think that. What if you were born in Nazi Germany? The context has changed in the environment that you're growing up in. That's an extreme, yeah, that's an extreme example. But if I go, <coughs> oh, I could never do that. Really? Is that really true? If you see someone going through something and you say that you can never do that, you are claiming more virtue than you actually have, which is, again, you're creating a truth. You're yeah, which is pride. Yes, but would it be same true as if I said, I never want to do that? Now is that true? 
Yes. I guess at the moment. At the moment. Mm -hmm. Or if I look at that and say that's awful, the world needs to learn from that and get over that. Learn from that and be better than that. If I said the world needs to be better than that, is that true? I don't think it matters in context, so. It doesn't really matter in context because you've established, we, we know what truth is and we, we've established that God's truth is truth, right? Anything that reflects back to God and, and glorifies Him is truth, right? So, what I'm going to do is, we with your neighbor, with a couple of neighbors, I want you to come up with something that you all agree on that you think you could, something right off the bat that you all think you would never think you could do, but the context that you realize that you could probably do it. That you as a human, different circumstances, different context would do it. With your neighbor. All right, we've got to start getting quiet. What do you think? Start over here. What do you guys got? Killing someone. That's a pretty good go-to. Okay, what circumstances would you do? What do you think what, what could drive you to do it? Not saying you wouldn't do it in the circumstances. That's not even wrong, is it? I think it's scary. Or if you're having this little attack in your home. I mean, you're at home, you're releasing someone, you're an intruder. I would never kill someone. All of a sudden it became not necessarily true. Well, that fact is like flat out circumstantial. I think you guys are talking about killing someone too, right? We said murder, so unlawfully, unprovoked, intentional. Okay. Cold blooded. And in what circumstance would you do it? Or not would you do it? Say would you do it? Do you think would drive someone or a change of context would do it? It would be a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Well, how much money? <laughs> they, they've taken out my family in the past with no remorse. We can do that. And yep. so, that's provoking me now, but yep. I'm going to just uh, ask What do we got over here? Was it parachute? Hang gliding, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, hang gliding. Hang gliding, okay. I could never, you know. Hang gliding, okay. What circumstances would push you to hang gliding? You've got enough friends together that were doing it. Peer pressure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. If somebody else does it first, exactly. and, and doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> to prove. Maybe you're, you make your proof that that, that's actually not something you need to be worried about, right? Mm. Okay, I'm going to have to give you the same challenge. Think of something that's politically sensitive that is quite obvious on the other side. Like, you can throw it out. Like, you can pick something. Um, I'm not going to try. Pick something political and then think of a change of circumstances that might cause you to make a different decision. Okay, you all look like you got topics. Okay, you guys, what do you got? Abortion. Abortion. Okay, let's, let's hear under what circumstances. If you could change other core beliefs or convince me that. Well, so, what's the initial view of abortion? From your, your topic? Murder. Abortion is murder, mm -hmm. right? I happen to think that's more than, a, more than just uh, a, political opinion. a political opinion, but let's hear the circumstances you brought up. If you could convince me that murder is okay, or if you can convince me that there is no God, because those are the foundations of... Okay, so if you could change your core belief of what is true. Yeah. Right, okay. What do you guys have? Euthanasia is never okay. Euthanasia, okay, and then what's the, what circumstances would have to change to where you, you could see it from the other side? We, we see someone who, the spouse of an elderly person who, they thought they were signing a DNR, but it somehow didn't get registered, do not resuscitate did not get registered, and yet they clearly did not want to be resuscitated. It's bankrupting the spouse to continue service okay. to this person. Yeah, that's good. Okay, what do you all got? We have the no gun restrictions. No gun restrictions, and when, when, under what circumstances would that flip the view? They 
Yeah. I think I, I'll, I'll say, like, I'm pretty pro-gun, but if my child was shot in a school shooting, I would at least think about what if there were no guns. It would cross my mind, right? Yeah. Yeah. It would make me more, like, start to understand from the other side. Mm -hmm. Might not change your mind, but it goes around. This whole point, uh, so in scripture, who, who's pretty familiar with the armor of God? Your Bible makers probably should. The armor of God. What, what is the first armor piece of God? It is the belt of truth. The, the subject that, that uh, I'll, I'll read the passage here for us all. Okay, Here, here's the passage for, it starts in uh, Ephesians uh, 6.14. Stand therefore, gir having girded your waist with the truth, with, uh, girded, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel peace. New King James Version, my other Bible is in the house. It's the first thing on there. There's others. We're not going to to the others right now. But the first piece you put on is the belt of truth. The interesting thing that people tend to overlook with the armor of God is it's something you have to prepare yourself with every single day. As Christians, we're commanded to every single day you put on the whole armor of God to go out in the world and fight, do this fight, right? The first thing you should be doing is holding everything together with truth. Make sure we're not holding everything together with things that are not absolutely true. Does that make sense? We have, we have an anchor. We have the scripture. We have God's word as an anchor. We should not be holding our lives together, our daily lives and prepping our daily lives with anything that is not scripture. Does that make sense? So, it will raise a harder question. That's really hard to do. We can't live up to that perfect ideal, right? How many of you have never said an untruth? All of you wrote something down, right? I already have that answer. How do we start your day? You can't just go from zero to perfect. How do we get a good start? How about we don't say a lie? Think that's a pretty good start to not, to living every day in truth, right? What's, what's, maybe not, not something you wrote down in your card. What's a common thing that you maybe didn't think about, but is technically not true that you might say or do every single day? Or commonly, maybe not every single day, but commonly. We're at college, I can probably think of something that almost everyone has in common. Somebody? Anybody? Have everyone, has everyone in this room, every single time they've said this, been truthful, I've done my homework? <laughs> yeah. That's You're I'm about doing. to say it. I'm about to tell my friends. So I ask, I'm, I'm done my homework. I'm about, they're like, hey, you done your homework. Christopher, you done your homework? No. No. But we're about to go have fun. Maybe he hasn't answered yet. We're about to go do something <clears throat> fun. We're about to go do something exciting that's more interesting. That we all claim we've done our homework. We can't go do this without doing our homework. But I ask Christopher, hey, you done your homework? You want to come with us? rolls through your mind, what do I answer? And I'm not just, homework's a common thing that we all have coming. I'm trying to guilt trip you all and not leave that doing your homework. I'm not, I wasn't that guy, I'm not trying to hold you that guy. But our decisions, when we tell something, when we say something, can either be a true, true or untrue. Quite often we'll save ourselves face. We try to save ourselves face. We 
Let's try to save our reputation. Maybe we've got that sweet tooth. Fast food's healthy, right? But those are untrue. Saying things that are untrue will work very slowly to tear apart your life. Driving points, driving opinions that are not true, spreading opinions to people will tear down an institution. To bring us all back to the point of your country, driving beliefs that are not true as truth will tear down a country. How, how do we start to recognize what's true and what's not true? Is, is everything on the right, on a political aisle, true? Everything that they go for, true. As Christians, we need to look over there and say, is everything true? Is everything on the left true? No. What we need to keep track of in daily life and daily walk, even hold our own, hold your own country and your own beliefs and your own companies, your own institutions to this, is our things we are saying and pushing and forcing absolutely true. And how do we know something's that? What's a good baseline? We've said several times that I know something is absolutely true. It's true even if you change the context. Well, if I if I really fast, if I really need to know something's absolutely true, where should I get it from? The Bible. The Bible. Scripture. Yeah. We very easily get stuck into the into sides. And it's kind of what I'm getting to this point. We get those of you who are deep in politics uh, know the term of the adversarial system, right? It's really easy for one side to team up against the other side because they, it's the opposites, right? Maybe I don't believe one side fully, but they're against those guys, I'm with them. Is that a Christ-like way to stand? Throughout the Bible, for Jesus' ministry, there were two groups that hated each other, but they hated one person more. They hated Christ more. That's the Pharisees and Sadducees, right? They did not like Christ. But Christ was not on either side. Those were the two religious sides. I'm not, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't go do into politics. I think everyone should, to some scale, be involved in political matters. It's important. Some people are called to be more involved in other matters. But what you need to focus on is when you anchor your beliefs, when you anchor your policies, when you anchor what you're telling people is true, they need to come from Scripture. To start this, this is, this is not an easy task, but to start, start your day, don't lie. No. Which is don't, do what? Knowingly. Don't lie knowingly. And then you can build it on to don't lie at all. Because that, that way you can then go to, I'm about to tell, I'm about to tell uh, Christopher fast food's healthy, because I want to go to fast food, but then, but is fast food really healthy? I know it's not, and I sit and think about it, it's not. Maybe, maybe I actually got into the word and got into truth that morning. Maybe I, I put that belt on, ready, ready for the day, through the word. And all of a sudden, I know that's not true. I shouldn't say that. I know fast food's not healthy, but I need some comfort food right now. Would be a whole lot better answer. Maybe you shouldn't have fast food at all. Maybe you need to admit that. Again, harping on that, that uh, topic. Start with the basic steps. Y'all, you know your life. You and the Lord are the ones in charge of your life. They, you two know everything that was on there. Let's start with not saying a lie. Let's not say something that's not true. Because every time you say something that's not true, or you don't think it's true, or you were told and you don't know that it's true, who's speaking? Someone else. 
someone else. And who spoke it to them? Someone else. At the back end, if it's a lie, if it's an untruth, ultimately who is speaking? The devil is speaking. Whether you, on a, any of the political line, <clears throat> when you say something that's not true, who is speaking? No. All the way to the devil. No good can come from that. My challenge for you guys today, understand that when you tell untruths, anything that is not an absolute truth, Someone else is speaking. You have no idea who is speaking. Right? Again, I'm, this is a little bit, this is not to not trust anybody. You, sh you can trust people. We have, we have a very substantial, very deep, very thorough document right here, histor history, that says, that has every word in it is true. Yeah. Did you say that um, good can only come from saying things that are absolutely true? No. No good can come from saying things that are lie. If I did, I was uh, probably tied up in words. Good can come from truth. No, nothing evil can come from, or nothing evil will come from saying truth. But especially if it's God's truth, nothing evil will come from saying that. <coughs> that pretty, all of us can pretty well agree on that, right? That's truth. Anchor everything in your life in this. If that's if only speaking truth is hard, let's start with not lying. Maybe let's start with not lying as much. Even if it's to yourself, to your neighbor, to an instructor, hey. I, I didn't have time to do that homework. Could be an untruth. Hey, I missed it. I felt a little bit short. You know, it's up to you. Give me a chance to, I'll get it done. You just resisted the temptation to let the devil speak through you into speaking truth. Right? That truth right there, even if you get consequences from it that you don't think you would have gotten, from saying an untruth, that's still good. Make sure I hit on my on that. Any questions? I think we'll talk over my time here, but sir. Okay, you said general truth. Nothing bad can come from that. From speaking general truth. As long so here's the thing. True as long as it actually is true, uh -huh. it's that's right. Because if it's true, it's from here. Okay, so absolute truth. Absolute it has to root, root back to absolute truth. Oh, okay. I could say something that is true that most people think is true, but is it actually true? I, I was trying to specify, because we have a general, like, the term truth is actually only absolute truth. Does that make sense? There, I, I'm trying to use it to differentiate what we usually think is truth to what is actually true. There is no general truth. Does that make sense? There is, there is a statement which, in a way, can be Correct. I think it would be a better, better way of saying it. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So characteristics of a person that can change are not absolute truth. It, that's not the truth that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Okay. One is it like the point being that if it's true, it comes it comes back from this. The whole point of this is sometimes we weave things that we claim are true, things we think are true, into what govern our daily life, but they're not actually, not all of them are actually established in absolute truth. Are there things that are absolutely true 
that it can be discovered that have nothing to do with the Bible. Yeah. But do but here's here's the question. Does it is there anything that can be discovered that is absolutely true that was not created by God? Then does it come back to here? So in case I, I technically I was wrong a second ago, it does resort back to absolute truth. Right? Great question though. Good, good bring up. Anything else? It's kind of a mishmash. This is such a wide subject. I by no means am I an expert on this. Stuff I learned through life, through learning things. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. But if someone can come to me and convince me otherwise, it's in the truth. Um, thanks, Joel, for listening. Uh, thanks for coming. I do want to challenge you something, something to do here. These sticky notes. Before you head out, you should take one and write on it one, two things. Don't lie. It's a reminder. Write on this, don't lie. Stick it on something. Stick it on your phone. Stick it on the back of your phone. It's a simple thing that's not so simple. No other questions? Then that's it. That's it for me. All right. Dim in, guys.